In the field of chip foundry, TSMC is undoubtedly the global leader. However, because TSMC used American technology in the production of chips, the United States forcibly dismantled the close partners of TSMC and Huawei. As we all know, Huawei is the second largest customer of TSMC, and the loss of Huawei will have a great impact on TSMC. Therefore, TSMC is also trying its best to achieve free shipments to Huawei. So can TSMC resume supply to Huawei this year? Well, there is currently no official statement. However, we can speculate from some new measures that TSMC has recently made. From these new measures, can we know that whether TSMC will achieve free supply to Huawei? Okay, let's take a look. It is unexpected that, as the hegemon of the global semiconductor industry, the domestic chip manufacturing capacity of the United States is rapidly depleting. According to data released by the American Semiconductor Association, the chip production capacity in the United States has plummeted in recent years. Earlier, the U.S. chip production capacity accounted for 37% of the global chip production capacity. However, in the past two years, the share of the United States in global chip production capacity has dropped to 12%, which has shrunk by more than half compared with the peak period. In order to effectively increase local chip production capacity, the United States has repeatedly invited chip foundries such as TSMC and Samsung to invest and build factories in the United States since last year. To this end, the United States also proposed a preferential policy of rent-free. Recently, Qualcomm has begun to supply Huawei, so many people have turned their attention to TSMC, speculating whether TSMC will also be approved to manufacture chips for Huawei, but judging from the recent actions of TSMC, it seems to have explained everything. Do you know who is the most active among the many chip manufacturing companies that invest and build factories in the United States? The answer is TSMC. TSMC, which can't wait to embrace the United States, has also been ridiculed by the US media, TSMC is about to Americanize. According to media reports, TSMC went to Arizona to invest $12 billion in a chip foundry, which is expected to be completed and officially put into production by 2024. In addition to this factory, TSMC also actively responded to the call of the United States and decided to invest in the construction of another chip factory in the United States. The factory is mainly responsible for chip packaging and is expected to officially start construction before the end of this year. It is worth mentioning that in addition to these two chip factories, there has been news recently that in the next 15 years, TSMC will invest in the establishment of six chip factories in the United States, including the three nanometers chips currently under development by TSMC, that is to say, in just over a decade, TSMC will go to the United States to build nearly 10 chip factories, and most of them are advanced chip factories. I think we already know the answer to the question asked at the beginning of the video. First, the reality is that the United States has always considered TSMC as its exclusive domain. Because 90% of TSMC's shares are foreign capital, especially American capital, no matter where TSMC builds a factory, the main interest is still American capital. On the contrary, TSMC builds factories in Asia, because the labor cost is lower, but it will make the return on capital higher. Therefore, it is against the logic of capital for TSMC to return to the United States to build a large-scale factory. Second, TSMC is engaged in advanced chip manufacturing, while the United States does not have many layouts in the chip manufacturing industry chain. In other words, the United States lacks skilled workers in chip foundry. From the current perspective of the world, only workers in Taiwan are the most cost-effective and have the highest proficiency in foundry. TSMC decided to go to the United States on a large scale, which will face a series of problems such as lack of talent, long training period, and high labor costs. Third, TSMC is currently listed on the Taiwan stock market and the US stock market, but the relevant factories are all in Asia. Therefore, TSMC's disclosure in the US stock market is not complete and transparent, but if it sets up a factory in the United States, it will face extremely strict and complex information disclosure requirements, which may also lead to the disclosure of TSMC's corporate strategy, business planning, and technology research and development. Therefore, considering these three points, 
TSMC has already completely compromised on the unreasonable demands of the United States. Besides, the loss of Huawei did not affect TSMC's performance. From the current operating conditions, TSMC's operating efficiency is getting better and better. Therefore, the American media believed that TSMC had begun to Americanize. It is impossible for TSMC to supply chips to Huawei against the wishes of his American fathers. What's more, on February 25, Taiwan announced that it would join the ranks of the US campaign against Russia. TSMC also issued a statement that it will comply with applicable laws and regulations, and is fully committed to complying with the announced new export control regulations. At the end of February, TSMC clearly responded that it has completely stopped supplying to Russia and related upstream suppliers. In fact, from the perspective of TSMC's two moves, we can tell that it would be difficult for TSMC to achieve free supply to Huawei this year. First, the US actions against Russia have nothing to do with TSMC at all. After all, TSMC is a China's company. But has TSMC done it? It has done everything that the US required, which shows that TSMC itself seems to be following in the footsteps of the United States, and it does not refuse even such unreasonable requests. At present, the United States has not released the free supply license to Huawei, and TSMC may not dare to argue for it. Therefore, it may be difficult to achieve free shipments to Huawei this year. Second, TSMC has actually stated its own position, that is, to adhere to the current regulations unswervingly. TSMC's statement proves that TSMC has not broken the export control restrictions imposed by the United States on TSMC, at least for now. TSMC does not have the will to fight for free shipments. Then, how can TSMC achieve free supply to Huawei this year? So, in the future, is there any hope that TSMC will achieve free shipments to Huawei? I am afraid it would be very difficult to achieve this goal. After all, a lot of American technology is also used in TSMC's chip foundry. TSMC has not yet gotten rid of its technological dependence on the United States, and it is still unable to break the export control of the United States. In addition, if TSMC achieves free supply to Huawei, it will undoubtedly have a great impact on US domestic companies, and will undoubtedly bring great competitive pressure. After all, Huawei chips are only short of the foundry of advanced chips from the return of the king, and TSMC just makes up for this shortcoming. Therefore, the United States will not release TSMC's export control on Huawei at present. TSMC cannot get rid of its dependence on American technology, and the United States cannot release the license for TSMC to supply Huawei. Therefore, considering the above factors, we can come to the conclusion that if TSMC wants to achieve free shipments to Huawei in the future, the hope may also be very slim. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.